G'day guys and welcome back. Um, do apologise that there hasn't been many videos out in the last month or so. Um, I've been doing a lot of work from A to mine, um, a lot of prototype work which I can't show on camera yet. Um, I probably won't be able to show it on camera to be honest. So and that's going to be ongoing for a little bit longer but I'm getting sort of a bit tired of making the same old same old things you know I want to want to make something fun so I've had these plants for some time this is from Aaron engineering it's the large bobbler engine Can you see it there it's a large bobbler engine and I've had these plants for ages and I I got them out this morning I went stuff it I just want to do something different and just sort of make something instead of you know prototype of stuff and hoping it's right and changing it and remaking things and going around around circles as you do when you prototype stuff but that has kept me fairly busy and with homeschooling and the kids and all that sort of stuff it's just yeah it's just been fairly hectic but I'm going to get in to start making this. First bit we're going to do is the um, sort of the main stem. The main stem of the show here. This main piece that everything sort of goes, the crankshaft goes through, the bell body, the whole lot. Got a nice bit of aluminium here, which I'm going to turn into a square. Um, it's already to length, just face it to length. Um, going to start square it up in the uh, in the Cincinnati and then probably go to the shaper and use a shear tool to finish it off depending on what sort of finish I get on the Cincinnati so that's what we're going to do good fun easy project no bullshit <laughs> Very, very nice finish. I've got a 10 power cut on to see what it does. That is absolutely beautiful, that finish. Unbelievable. Way better than what I thought that was going to be. Well, I don't think there's any need to put it in the shape, to be honest. I'm very happy with that. That'll, that if I want to polish it up later, that'll polish up very, very, very easily.
Okay, I've got 9,000 9, left to come off this face, so I've dialed it in, fly cutters in. Bloody beautiful. So I've gone ahead and set out all these dimensions here on that block of aluminium. Um, simply scribe the line, centre punch the marks. I've got it set up in the drill in the um, in the small mill. I'm going to put all these features in. So it's a half inch hole there, twelve point seven. An 8mm hole there. It's also got a counter ball, half inch counter ball. So, and a couple of 4mm holes up the top here. And then there's one from the side. Comes in. It comes in from on this yeah, on this face here. Um, that's what the actual piece of cop brass tube is going to go in quarter inch brass tube there with the air th or the inlet so air inlet so got the bang air so over to the uh, small mill and we'll drill these out this first hole here is where the crankshaft goes through that's got to be a reamed half inch hole 12.7 half inch
just enough to break that edge. This next hole here is a reamed 8mm hole for the cylinder. It's where the cylinder pivots. Five mil drill. This is a four millimeter hole that goes all the way through. This one here goes halfway and then gets joined up in conjunction with another hole in from this side. So this one here can go all the way through. take that burr off because that's where the valve body actually pivots on here and picks up the inlet and exhaust so that's exhaust valve this is inlet so it's got to be smooth okay so this one here has to go into a depth of 20 mil you worry about a spot drill center drill Amazing. to go and I've got to count this hole this pivot hole for the for the cylinder it's got to be counterboard in the other side so the spring can recess in there I believe that's what it's for anyway okay so I've, I've turned the block over so you've got the intake and exhaust over this side um, this is a four millimeter hole 16 mil deep which will line up or intersect with that intake hose intake line pipe hole whatever you want to call it then it's got to be counterboard out to quarter inch or reamed out to quarter inch six mil deep for the um, intake tube
I know it's very, very bad practice and I will get told it's not the right thing to do to put an end mill in a drill chuck, but sometimes it works. did work. Rightio, so recap, we've got the uh, oh bloody dropped it on the bench, put a chip in it there. So we've got the main this main portion done, main yeah, the upright. Next on the list is the cylinder. So in the lathe I've got a piece of aluminium um it's on dimension, the right diameter, um, and I've put a, I think it was a 7mm drill, up the guts of it, 76.2mm in. So my idea is now, is to put an end mill, got an end mill in the collar chuck, in the tail stock, and I drive it up to 76.2, and then I'll use a boring bar, because that'll give me a square end, hopefully. Um, a square end at the end of the then I can use a boring bar and just open it up to 19.05 that's the plan so we'll get on okay, so we've got a 5.8 end mill in here um, and I'll run it up I've got it up for you if I just clear the end of the collet nut I'm 76.2 in or well, as good as 76 in there so that's the go This is an end mill we made Trevor Sharpen for me. On a DB grinder. Been doing a fantastic job of sharpening my cutters. Been doing a great job. So thanks very much Trevor, I really appreciate it mate. Okay, the print calls for this bore to be 19.05 millimetres. The bar, the brass bar stock I've got is 19.5 or 19.05. So I'm going to take it back to Imperial. Um, I'm going to make this bore 740 thousandths and I can skim this off to bring it to 700 and whatever it's going to be, so it's a nice slide fit, but not a jam fit, um, that'll be just, I'd say, um, sort of sanded back to where it's going to be a beautiful fit for the piston, so this is coming out, this is going to go out to 740 thou, so I think I've got 23 thou on the dial to break, take off, 23 and a half thou or something, but anyway, I know I'll swap between metric and imperial, but that's the way it is. This is a Sandvik boring bar. Um, the other bar at boring bars I got are only short, and this being 76 mil long, I haven't got enough reach, so just light cuts with this bar, even though it is a Sandvik, it's pretty good. It's not like a Chinese import, but still does flex a little bit.
your measurement and take one all the way in there see how true it's running 743 so we've got a bit Quarter of a thou taper. Yeah, it's not much. It's just not going to matter. So I break this edge now very lightly and then part it off. Plan says 82.55. Oh, bullshit. 82.54. 53. Close enough for me, man. Okay, we're over here at the Cincinnati. Got the cylinder in the vise. The next uh, thing we have to do is put this flat on here so it works out I have to take off 191 thou off this top face here I've got a three flute end mill that's really nice and sharp that's another one Trevor sharpened up for me so I'm going to take a hundred thou and an 80 thou and then put the fly cutter in and finish the last off with a fly cutter so that's a hundred That's a nice finish. Okay, over to the mill drill now and we've got to put a threaded hole at the uh, inlet where it inlets and exhaust outs of a four mil hole I think it is. And it's got to have a tapped eight mil hole which yeah a bit of a pain in the ass to try and deburr the inside of the hole once it's drilled and tapped, but anyway it's the way it is. I should have really done that bore afterwards, but I was worried how I was gonna hold that to get it all concentric again, but anyway. I'm sure there's a reason we'll get around it somehow. 
a way to do it. Right, so this hole here, we're looking at this one in here, which is 8.25 by 1.25 thread. Power tap this for the fun of it. Make sure I don't hit the bottom of that ball. Done. So what we ended up with is a mark on there, which I'm not happy about. I run a um, precision ground stone across these, and this, I made this little pivot rod. It's got M8 by 1.25 thread each side. Goes into there. Um, Dropping it again. That goes through there goes on there and then the, obviously the nut does up which is the only spring I can bloody find that I've got might be a bit heavy but anyway but that's what gives it it's um it's oscillating so there we go doesn't look too bad so far can be a big engine big pisser anyway now we'll get on to making the piston in Conrad, which is all one piece. <laughs>